I am happy to be telling you about our work in juvenile idiopathic arthritis today. There are several subtypes of JIA. Polyarticular subtype has five or more joints in the first six months of disease, and we tend to treat this subtype more aggressively. Oligoarthritis has four or fewer joints in the first six months of disease, and we treat with more mild interventions. There is a subset of oligoarticular arthritis who recruit more joints after six months of disease and have a more aggressive course. In our project, we are interested in predicting which patients will have extension because those patients have decreased health-related quality of life and an increased risk of needing joint replacements even when compared to the polyarticular arthritis. We have been developing synovial fluid biomarkers to predict which patients are likely to extend before it is clinically apparent so we could offer more effective treatment. When we tested our candidate synovial fluid biomarkers on an independent cohort from our own repository, there was reasonable specificity for all the biomarkers. However, CD14 was the most specific and IL-6 was the most sensitive for accurately predicting which synovial fluid came from patients who ultimately extended. During this pilot, we have conducted a blinded study on samples from Cincinnati Children's Pediatric Rheumatology Cohort. Again, CD14 was the most specific and IL-6 the most sensitive, although the accuracy of the biomarkers decreased. When we combined the cohorts, the biomarkers were better for predicting who will remain persistent specificity as opposed to predicting those who will extend sensitivity. In the third and fourth quarters of this pilot, we will be combining these synovial fluid biomarkers into a multi-analyte panel using the Illumina platform. In addition, we aim to translate these synovial biomarkers into serum biomarkers. As you remember, we would like to predict which patients are most likely to extend as close to disease onset as possible, so more complete information and treatment options can be offered to patients and families. Not all patients get synovial fluid removed, so we need to expand our applicability of our biomarkers to a blood test. We have already started collecting serum samples from patients with well-characterized JIA to determine serum levels of candidate biomarkers. In addition, as patients are being sent for joint injections, we are obtaining paired synovial fluid serum samples for correlation of biomarker levels. Thank you so much for your attention today.